Hey guys and welcome to the show. Now while it may seem that my computer is doing some thinking right now, it actually isn't. This is just me manipulating the default cursor. Now I've actually done a video on this way back many, many years ago. I think we were using GameMaker 8. And we were using drag and drop to, um, to actually just replace the default mouse with some sort of sprite that we created. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do the same in GameMaker Studio 2. We're gonna be using code. Not only are we gonna be setting the cursor to one of our own sprites, but also we can actually use the built-in Windows cursors at any point in time. There are quite a few of them, so we can explore how to do that. So in this demo, um, if I click, just click around, it'll cycle through them. I've just got them going randomly, so you'll see between the pointer, there's a little up thing, and then the load, and so on. There's quite a lot, and if I push the space bar, it's actually going to set the sprite of the, well, the cursor to, to blank, and it's going to instead swap that out with one of my sprites. Boom, there we go, and I found this somewhere on the internet. Um, and it looks pretty neat. We've got the origin set to the the top left of it. Um, so if we had to do any clicking action, that's where it would happen from. Now we can actually create one object. I'm gonna create an object controller, which we, re we actually already have. And um, I'm just gonna be using those two events, global left pressed and the space bar pressed to change between them. Obviously in your case, you do these things on on the create event of some object that would represent your mouse because obviously you want to be doing some interactions with them and collisions and whatnot with objects, buttons, that kind of thing. So before we jump into the code, there is a whopping amount of people who aren't subscribed watching this video right now. I want you to go and click that subscribe button, hit the notification icon so that you'll get updates when I'm posting new things because um, these videos are going to get really exciting. All right, so here's, um, I I'd say it's pretty blank. It's got a sprite, which is the cursor we saw earlier. Check the origin is zero, zero, which happens to be at the top left. That's where we want the clicking action to happen anyway, if we had to interact with something. I've got a controller which is gonna be handling the changing between the, the sprite, which is this, or playing around with, with some of the default cursors. Now, in my previous video, we actually used, we used drag and drop, we set the sprite, and then I think we used a step event to make sure that it, it followed where the mouse cursor was, but there are actually easier ways to do that. So for example, if in my controller event, we had to just say, let's go, let's start with the the key space bar. This one's actually quite neat. And I can bring up the documentation. So in the YoYo docs, window set cursor, this is a really cool one. And basically it's just that very straightforward window set cursor, and then you give it um, some sort of innumerable, oh, it's constant, there you go. If you don't want anything, you use none, which is useful if you want to replace it with a sprite. And then here are all the defaults, check that out. You've got, I mean, these are a little dated, they, they change depending on what version of operating system you're using. But um, there they all are. So we're gonna be using all of these and checking them out as we cycle between them. So here's an example. The above code will change the window cursor to the standard Windows drag cursor if the left mouse button has been pressed. So that's great. You can use these in conjunction with um, familiar gestures that the person's gonna be using. If they're dragging something, then use the little dragging, extending, resize icon, that kind of thing. And again, if you don't wanna use these, you can use your own one as we will get to as the second point. So back into our code, when we um, press the space bar, here's what we're gonna do. Some of you are gonna wanna go um, cursor sprite like this, which is actually so far so good. And then you'd say SPR uh, cursor. Ooh. All right, so SPR cursor is this guy. And by using this command cursor sprites, it's gonna replace the default sprite with, um, with that one, right? Well, let's see what happens if we do that. See, the problem here is while it does that, we still have our mouse. Oh no, this is horrendous. While it is working, it's not really 100% of what we need. So we have to use this statement in conjunction with window set cursor. And remember that, um, that guy here, CR none? Well, we have to use him to hide the Windows default cursor. And now if we power that up, see that? We have the real cursor we want, which is the cool sprite, and we don't have the default cursor on top of it. And it follows around normally, um, which is a benefit of this over the previous solution, because in that one we had to keep updating it every step. So this does it automatically. Pretty cool stuff. So next up, let's look at what it takes to actually use these different default cursors from the operating system. So to do that, I'm gonna go into create a global left pressed event. So every time I click the left mouse button, just in some open space, it's gonna be doing something here. Now I'm gonna be using um, the choose function. So 
I want to randomize to make sure that we get a new seed every time um, we play this quote unquote game. Now also, because um, we may or may not have, have pressed space bar, I want to be 100% sure that our cursor sprite is, um, is set to CR none. Because directly after it does that, that's like a reset. Think of this as a reset. After it does that, we're going to be doing window set cursor. And we're going to be sending them to some of these guys. So, you know, default arrow, etc. I wanted to choose one at random. And I've actually got all these coded out already. I'm just going to paste it in there. And let's make this a little better so everyone can see what options we've got. And yeah, each one of these is from, from the official documents. I'll put the link in the description below. So what this is going to do is you're going to randomize the seed to make sure that when it hits the choose, we don't get the same sequence of, of cursors every time we left press um, from a new game. We're going to use this line, cursor sprite CR none, just in case we've done this already. Because remember, the cursor sprite isn't set to, to anything particular, no sprite per se when it starts. But as soon as we set one here, it's going to be set that at a global level. So we need to make sure that if we're undoing that, we need to reset that kind of space there. Then we're using window set cursor over here to choose between one of the default cursors that are baked into your operating system. Again, it's probably a good idea to use the most appropriate cursor for the situation. If you've got some dragging elements in your game, um, you can use, uh, well, let's see if we go to this, one of these guys, you know, size, NESW. Um, if you're hovering over text, you can use beam, you know, that kind of thing. Make it really, really work because um, the, the great minds behind the operating system really spend a lot of time figuring out what's appropriate for what situation. So I, I trust them when it comes to what they currently use the cursors for. So you can take some hints from that. All right, so let's fire this up. I'm also gonna hit space so that we can see that it is actually resetting. So here we have our cursor. Um, that's what we saw before. If I click now, we should see our sprite cursor disappear, be replaced with one of the various defaults. Just like that, and if I click really fast, you can see it go to that, and if I click space, we switch back to this one. Pretty neat stuff, huh? So that's really how simple it is to replace the cursor with another default, one of the other defaults, or one of your own. So if you found this tutorial educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. Definitely subscribe so that you can get hot videos just like this one. If you'd like to support this channel, please check out my Patreon. You can also get cool videos like this a couple days sooner. If you were a patron right now, you'd actually see this video um, yesterday, which was Tuesday, and not today, which is Wednesday, which is the normal scheduled time. Project files for this can be found in the description. And as always, happy coding, and I'll see you next time.